My name is Sean Agnew. I'm, I'm based in Chicago, uh, and I have a company called Blue Metallic Entertainment Group. Um, had the great fortune of being in a number of, of different groups over the years. One that actually was formulated here in Indiana, where I grew up, um, and had the great great privilege of, of opening and touring with a lot of iconic uh, rap acts like like uh, Tupac uh, 17 years ago at BRE, uh, there with Mr. Miller and uh, Public Enemy. And uh, over the years, um, went into consultation, business consultation, uh, sponsorship, matchmaking, that kind of thing. Uh, worked on the Jeep tour, the Sprite tour, billionaire boys club projects. Just got done doing a project with uh, uh, Lizard King Records uh, for the Killers for Atlanta through uh, for their UK release. Also with um, Gene Simmons for uh, of Kiss um, for his uh, Schoolhouse Rocks show that still plays every week in the UK and also in France. Um, as far as the the uh, the networking thing, a couple of things that, and I think everybody's given some really great information. Hopefully, everybody's paid attention to it. But one of the things that I think really stuck with me is that, yeah, I do agree. Presentation is every it's a lot in this business. But I think to me, the most important thing is the relationship, because the bottom line is if you've gone out of your way and you've built a relationship with somebody, I don't care if you pass it on a napkin. If they really respect you, if they feel like that they, they believe in what you're doing, um, you know, as Shadow Cat said about. And I'm sorry, I didn't get your name, brother, with the glasses. Riddles. Riddles. He was talking about your work ethic. You know, that's great. Obviously, you built a relationship with him enough for him to mention you up here. That means, you know what, if you, if you come with no cover, if it's not got a title or anything on it, he's going to listen to you because he has respect for you. Um, and the, the way that I have navigated this business uh, over the last 22 years um, is just the fact of making myself readily available to help other people. Um, the way that we got on with Public Enemy was I went up after, after waited for four hours afterwards at the back door and asked, could I help? That was it. And then Chuck and I have had a relationship for 20 some years from that, you know? Um, and I think that that's very important for everybody to understand because we've gotten in such a quick mode now in this industry that everybody, it's all about me, 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 when people come up to these folks and whether it's radio, media, whatever in the industry. And it's n I very rarely hear anybody come up and say, hey, what can I do for you? Because I'm telling you, when those people come up and say that, none of these people up here will ever forget them, ever. I don't know, I'm not going to say they're going to help you, I'm not going to say they're going to put you on, but they will not forget you. Um, so that's one thing that I, I definitely wanted to put out there because that's something that is just lost. I mean, I think that that a lot of the people that I came up with, they all recognize that. And that's why a lot of those groups that came up in that same time frame that we all know and love, they all helped each other. They helped each other. That was just the way you did it. You know what I mean? Um, and now it's not quite so much like that because there's so much more competition and, and it is a world market. As much as you want to get on here in Indianapolis, um, you know, there's a lot of other competition around the planet. Um, I just uh, was working with a girl uh, from a really small town um, called Mazel Manny, Wisconsin. I'm sure none of you have ever heard of it because uh, I've been there and I still don't know where it is. Um, and uh, this girl was 16 years old when I met her, um, but you could tell right away she had something about her. It was just a way about her. Um, through a few relationships and a few meetings, um, fortunately, I, I was, I'm good friends with a gentleman who owns a company called BandMerch.com. That gentleman's son just happens to be the lead guitarist for a little group called Lincoln Park. And that girl ended up, through a couple of chance meetings, ended up getting signed to their label, Machine Shop Records, on Warner Brothers. And uh, if you know uh, who Fort Minor is and that song, Where You Go, that, that's her. Her name is Holly Brook, right? So that came, guys, I'm telling you, from like me sitting down with her, a phone call. And I had a very small part to do it. I'm not telling you that I, I put her on. That was her. That was a lot of people in, the, in, the, in Warner Brothers that helped her out. But the bottom line is that I wasn't looking at her as what she could do for me. I looked at her as how. How can I help you? Because she, I knew she was in a small little town where nobody was ever going to hear from this girl. She's been singing on records with her mom since she was three years old. I got three little boys. They have three, three records of, of midnight songs from Holly Brook that are signed and autographed that will, I'm sure, be worth money someday. But because she's been doing it that long. Um, and the bottom line behind that is that you never know who you're going to meet that's going to be able to help you, but better yet, what you can do for them. Everybody in this room, there's all kinds of connections up on this panel. I mean, I, I've, you know, I've known uh, DJ Indiana Jones, a.k.a. Ron Miner, um, for a number of years. And even when back in the day, I watched the stuff that he and his group were doing and still remember a lot of the great marketing things that they were doing and the way they were hustling and that kind of thing. 
Um, you never know who's who's who you're going to meet in this industry, and you never know who's going to be who's going to be around. And the one thing I've learned with this is that if you never give up in this industry, you will eventually be successful. Because bottom line is, so many other people are going to quit that you're going to be the only one left standing. Right? It's just a matter of fact. So my my real advice to you overall, you know, we can get into specifics if you have questions, because I definitely I want to make sure we leave enough time, because I know a lot of people got questions and. A lot of great panelists to, to ask questions of, but I would just say this to you: that whatever your whatever your genre is, um, you know, I don't care if it's rap, hip hop. I've worked in all. I've done rock. I, you know, I did a promotions for the for the Killers. Um, you know, a lot of different stuff where I was the only black person in the in the meeting. Um, actually, they took me to the hip hop A and R guy when I wasn't supposed to meet with him. Um, but you know, regardless of who and what you do. Just remember that the other, the other, there are other people out there. They all got needs, just like you got needs. And if you can help enough people fill their needs and get their goals, I guarantee you, you will get yours. And if you want to go old school, we can talk about, you know, uh, scales of balance with the Bible because it's in the Bible. In case you forgot that in in uh, in, in Bible school. So just remember that. Um, the other thing I would say too is don't forget that that there are all kinds of other ways to get your music out there, and it is a very big, big world. Okay, um, like I said, the group that I was in, one of the groups I was in, started here in Indiana, but I left here and went to Germany, um, and got on on a major record label in Germany. So, you know, it's, it's not about necessarily where you are, where you are, as much as it is your belief in what you do and what you guys are going to do with it.